filmed the short thing today so I can film the long thing tomorrow. <laughs> All right, hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my uh, book haul for the months of March and April. Um, how many books did I acquire? Math. 17, right? No, no, that was wrong. <laughs> 12 plus 9 is not 17. Shit. 21. In the month of March, I acquired 12 books. And in the month of April, I acquired 9. So let's let's get chatting about what, what all came into my life. Uh, first up is a book that I just finished and I will gush about tomorrow when I film my April wrap-up. This is Fearlessly Different, An Autistic Actor's Journey to Broadway's Biggest Stage by Mickey Rowe. Um, Mickey Rowe is, <clears throat> excuse me, a Seattle-based um, autistic actor, and he is the first known autistic actor to play the main character of Christopher in the stage production of The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Um, so this Anyway, one of my most anticipated releases for the year. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, yes. Um, if you are looking for like own vo voices, stories about autism, about neurodivergence, about like disability justice, fuck yeah. Um, so I will gush about that in more detail tomorrow or in that other wrap up. Fingers crossed I film it tomorrow. Okay, next I've got um, another used book. This is Fathoms, The World and the Whale by Rebecca Giggs. Um, this is... Uh, after I finished reading Braiding Sweetgrass, I was just hungry for more science slash memoir slash environmental justice kind of things. And this was one that um, I got, I put on my TBR uh, because of, oh, what's her name? A Book Olive, uh, based on the recommendation by A Book Olive. Anyway, also this cover is absolutely gorgeous. Just like that iridescent, like, excuse the fingerprints, but that iridescence of the whale is awesome. Um, cool. Uh, next, oh wait, next is another book I already read. I got an ebook copy of Her Soul to Take. This is um, an erotic paranormal fantasy. I think I talk about this in my March wrap up. Um, what, what was my tagline? It was like sexy Scooby-Doo for adults. It's fun. There's a there's a, a, a second book in that series, which I I don't know when, but yeah, I would totally like continue on with that series. It was it was fun. It was fun. It was exactly what I needed when I picked it up. Okay, next. Uh, this is a book that my dad got me for my birthday. This is a hardcover copy of The Mists of Avalon, which is a chonker. How many pages is this? 876 pages. Um, it's a former library copy. You know, he, he gave it to me and kind of facetiously said, like, I'm sorry that I couldn't find you a new copy because he knows that I'm absolutely overjoyed with secondhand copies. Um, but yeah, apparently finding a hardcover of this is quite challenging, but also like this is lovely. This is like a embossed, like it's textured, pearlized image. Um, yes, this brings me joy. And the fact that it was a gift is also lovely. And now more books that I've already read. I finally picked up some physical copies of Foundry Side and Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett. Um, I reread these, maybe, was I think it was it towards the end of February? No, I think it was like towards the end of March because I got um, an ARC ebook of the third book in the series, Locklands, which I enjoyed. Um, and when that one finally gets published in paperback, I will complete the series because these, uh, these are very cool covers. Like whoever did this, this cover design, great job. They're great. They're great. They're great. Okay. Um, and then uh, I'm going to start um, at including the books I've picked up from NetGalley because the more places where I keep lists of where those books are, the less likely I am to forget about them. Um, but I got approved for... Um, <clears throat> 
I got approved for a uh, NetGalley copy of of The Final Strife, uh, which is um, a The Final Strife by Sara El Arifi, the first book in a visionary fant fantasy trilogy with its roots in the mythology of Africa and Arabia. People who have been who have already uh, reviewed early release copies have been singing praises about it. Um, I saw that I, that NetGalley had a copy. I was like, whatever, I'll I'll just request it and see. And I got approved for it, so definitely need to read that soon. It comes out. Hold on, when does it come out? Will be published in, towards the end of June, June twenty first. And then I placed an order. Let's see, Better World Books was having a sale. They always have sales, but this one lined up with having budget available and stuff. Um, I got the next two books in the Cardinals Blade series. Actually, it's just a trilogy, so the next two, I, I don't know, the wording on that was weird. But um, we've got uh, The Alchemist in the Shadows and The Dragon Arcana. Um, this one came from the UK. I didn't realize that it was going to be such a different size. <laughs> and I think both of these, this is a former library copy. This one just has a cover on it, I believe. Oh no. Formerly a library copy from Kent. Um, actually finding like, a, like print copies of this series is getting challenging because they just published a bind up of all three books. These are, um, this is a... Uh, the Three Musketeers with Dragons, that is originally published in French, um, so it's a tran translated fantasy series. Um, but yeah, I think the individual copies are going to get kind of hard to find because they're now going to be promoting the bind-up of all three. Oh, and in that same purchase, I picked up uh, The Shamer's Daughter, which is another translated book by Lynn Cabarol. Um, this is like a middle grade fantasy about um, um, a girl who can like read people's darkest secrets or read their shame or whatever, I believe. Oh, hey, blurbed by Tamora Pierce. I gobbled it right up. Um, high praise indeed. So uh, this author lives in Copenhagen, Denmark. So I guess this was translated from Danish. But last book for March, um, I got... I uh, finally got the book three in the Leviathan series by Scott Westerfield. This is book three, Goliath. And then I read um, book two and book three in April. Yes. <laughs> so I will talk more about the series in um, that wrap up. I have to point out, I'm annoyed at this cover design a little bit because this character is um, a girl disguised as a boy and on the cover they've made her shorter than our male character and in the book in the books they mention several times that she's taller than him i don't know why you needed to do it this way i don't know small but like overall like the cover design is cool like the letters are all embossed and textured and you've got your funky beasties it's a like lycan lycanthrope anyway got your beastie characters anyway so small pet peeve with that weird design choices anyway okay that's it for march let's see okay all right in the month of april the first book i acquired was from a goodreads giveaway it's a copy of panama red um this is a i believe like military action Book, which is very outside of my normal genre, but um, it's a genre that my father-in-law devours and he always reads like the same three authors. <laughs> so it's always a search to try and find like a new series or a new author that he would enjoy instead of just like reading the same three people over and over again. Um, so uh, I saw that in the giveaways. I'm like, oh, let me, let me you know, I entered the giveaway, forgot about it, and now it came available, so I'll, I'll give it a shot and be like, I'm not the best judge of, like, what's good in that genre, but, like, if it's at all entertaining, cool, great, something new for him. 
Um, then uh have a bunch of stuff from Pango, I believe. Uh, I picked up a copy of Ice Planet Barbarians. This is the um, special edition printing of um, whatever, getting it traditionally published. Yeah, through a Penguin Random House. Um, I picked up a physical copy because my library does not have an ebook copy. It only has an audiobook copy. And I'm, that's like one genre where I'm like, I, I don't I don't know if I want to read that via audio, especially because I mostly read or listen to audiobooks at work. And I don't... It, it feels like a weird crossing wires to be listening to romance books at work. Feels weird. Feels weird. You know? I, I don't know. I don't need to get into it. But anyway. I'm gonna see what it's about. I have been forewarned that the beginning can be um, a little, uh, uh, that the beginning uh, is a little, a little rough going because there's some, um, on like there's some initial sexual assault that happens by the bad guys. Um, so I've been forewarned. Oh, Bookshop, bookshop.org, um, was having a sale, which they almost never do, because, like, which they almost never do. So it was time for me to pick up some books that I really wanted physical copies of, and I have, like, never seen a used copy <laughs> in the wild. Or, like, I saw it once, and it was, like, on Pango for 24 hours, and then it was gone. Um, anyway, so the books I picked up. I got um, Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. Um, all of these are nonfiction. This is a nonfiction that, of course, explores um, the uh, identity of being asexual. But really, more than that, it kind of explores the concept, like the spectrum of asexual to allosexual, and really kind of questions our social norms about what we expect about people's sexual behavior and sexual attraction and romantic attraction like this I feel like is like a must read for everybody um in terms of like is like a must read for everybody like not just like in, in terms of like understanding identities different from your own but like being like a like a big like for an example it's like the whole idea of like all of this effort put into creating Viagra for women um, and like that whole market. Um, and it's like, okay, but where's the conversation of like, maybe your low sex drive is normal and not a problem. And maybe you are actually like, and maybe the low sex drive itself doesn't make you unhappy. It's society's expectations of how you should behave that makes you unhappy. Um, so that's like one facet of like the kind of conversation that this book has. It's fantastic. I definitely will see myself rereading that. Um, similarly, I've got Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price, PhD. Devin Price is an autistic, disabled, um, tra trans doctorate. Uh, uh, are they still a professor? They might still be a professor. Um, and this uh, talks about uh, it, it kind of goes, I think, hand in hand with the narrative of how to do nothing, um, of like really challenging the societal expectation of like being productive and like always hustling. Um, and this, I found like this to be like a very, um, intersectional conversation because it not just like challenges, like, you know, the Puritan ideals that, that founded our culture and like capitalist expectation, but also like, what does that mean for like disabled and chronically ill people? And you know, how we view people's value in society when they are not able to be productive. And yeah, um, and I had initially listened to this on audiobook and the audiobook was super short. Um, and this was just like a really great conversation. And I find myself like really, I think it, it it's really helped me um, not feel guilty about the moments when I'm like, I just need to do nothing. Uh, also in that 
kind of a similar conversation. Uh, we've got Care Work, Dreaming Disability Justice by Leah Lakshmi Piepshna Samarasinha. She is um, a pretty well-known disability um, justice activist. She is also uh, queer and... Yeah, and she is, let's see, Lee Lakshmi Piepshna Samarasenha is a queer, disabled femme writer, organizer, performance artist, and educator of Burger, Tamil, Sri Lankan, and Irish Roma ascent. They said ascent rather than descent. Interesting. Interesting word choice. You have to think about that. Um, so this is a collection of essays about the topic of disability justice, disability uh, liberation, and inclusiveness. Um, and there's like a mixture of like her just reflecting on stuff and then her actually having like some of those essays be like a call to action and like a guidance for like how do you build inclusive practice? How do you build, um, how do you build a world or a company or an environment that is truly accessible and inclusive? Um, and this is one I definitely wanted to, re to revisit because I listened to it on audiobook like almost in one day on a very long drive um which was great to like have a long drive to just like dedicate to it but it also meant that like I couldn't take notes and like I like I couldn't like take bookmarks and take notes and stuff so I would like to go back in and be able to like put some tabs in of, of like specific things that I want to refer back to cool okay moving on okay um, and then I went into the little bookstore that's near my work. I just had a feeling, you know, I, I've talked about this before where I was like about to buy something online and then I just had a feeling, let me just go into this bookstore and see if they have it and then they don't have to pay for shipping. Um, and they had what I was looking for and it was great. Uh, so I picked up a copy of Certain Dark Things, which is m m mostly a cover buy, but, um, I ha- I have read so I have read- Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno before, and I enjoyed it. And then this is also um, Vampire Noir in Mexico City. Fuck yeah. <laughs> what? Don't worry. I, like, I am, I am slowly, like, building a list of books to hopefully film another, like, vampire fiction reading vlog. But um, also, like, gorgeous. Love it. Um, so that was a fun find. And then probably like the crown jewel of my acquired books. This is a signed copy of How Beautiful We Were by Imbolo Um, who, uh, so this is a, I think like historical fiction, is it historical fiction book, um, Set in the fictional African village of Koswana, um, it tells of a people living in fear amid environmental degradation wrought by an American oil company, um, and then kind of documents like their resistance and them fighting back against this. Um, so it's fiction, but definitely based on past and current real events. Um, I know Jesse from Bowties and Books has hyped this up so much, um, and like historical fiction, historical and contemporary fiction are like not my go-to genres but there is has something about like this story and then also like how people talk about it in reviews it's like i think this is going to be um one of the stand-ups in the genre that i do really enjoy and want to come back to um and then also finding like a signed copy like that's that's cool that that gives me good vibes um <clears throat> Uh, and then the very last book that I acquired in April from that galley, um, I got approved for a copy of Night Ivy. So this is Night Ivy by E.D.E. Bell. Zell is sure in her passion for magic, but struggles to find her place within the constructs that enable its study. Night Ivy offers the first verse of a wandering bard's tale of fancy and fantasy amid the spires and shadows of the Seven Towers of Elysia. So kind of a, a, a vague blurb, but I think they also, like, in the publisher's description, they're like, hey, we're like a really small press. Um, so like, you know, early feedback of our books is like super important. Um, and like that initial blurb gives me like some gives me vibes that it might be like a critique of the elitism of academia 
which is conceptually a subject I'm interested in exploring, but um, sometimes, you know, which um, concept, con conceptually I'm interested in fiction that um, can explore that conversation. So um, I will, and I think I also looked it up like it's not super long. Um, so I'm like, all right, small publisher, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I hopefully get to it before the published date. Oh, I should see when it comes out. Published date, July 4th. Cool. All right. Those are the books. Um, let me know if there's anything on here that you are also interested in reading or that you have gotten to and you're super excited for other people to read it. Um, let's chat in the comments below. Um, I, all right. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day. I encourage you to go out into the world and be curious. I will have my social media and other places where you can find me in the description box below. Um, and what's the rest of it? I will catch you folks in my next video. Bye.